Happy Wednesday. Here we are. All right. Sarah Hoos. How many know Sarah Hoos? A few people here, Mayus Scholars. Sarah is the director of the Mayus Scholars Program here at Hope College. Her and her husband, Jeff, moved here from Chicago. Two years ago. Two years ago. And Sarah, not only doing the work with the Mayus Scholars, is over at Western Seminary with her husband, Jeff, mm -hmm. working on an MDiv program. I am praying for Sarah, and I'm going to let her go. Thank you. So let's pray. God, thank you that we are your beloved, that you have chosen us, and we can be known as your sons and daughters. Now be yes. with your daughter, Sarah, now as she brings the word to us. We pray this in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Would you welcome Sarah Hoos? Thank you. Thank you. Just a quick couple of announcements. The MA Scholars Program is for sophomores and juniors, and this just began last year, so we're into the second year of the program. If you are a freshman or a sophomore currently and are interested, what Emmaus is all about is living into the kingdom of God. Why does Jesus care about justice? It's about forming your spiritual um, disciplines and being a faithful disciple of Christ and seeing how your gifts and passions and skills um, match up to the needs of the world and how the Lord wants to use you to bless the world through that. So we have an info session tonight at Martha Miller 135. And if you are interested, please come join us at 7 o'clock. There are also Emmaus scholars at every exit, I believe, who have brochures. So if you're a freshman or a sophomore, please take one to get more information. And Dr. Mark Husbands, who's over here to my right, he is the director of the program. He'll be here after chapel to answer any questions if you're interested, um, standing right over here. So with that, let's jump right into the word because I have like nine minutes <laughs> to unpack this. So we're reading from Acts chapter 4, verses 23 through 31. I hear that we're supposed to be bringing our Bibles to chapel every, every chapel. <laughs> so I hope you can read along with me. On their release, Peter and John went back to their own people and reported all that the chief priests and the elders had said to them. When they heard this, they raised their voices together in prayer to God. Sovereign Lord, they said, you made the heavens and the earth and the sea and everything in them. You spoke by the Holy Spirit through the mouth of your servant, our father David. Why do the nations rage and the peoples plot in vain? The kings of the earth rise up and the rulers band together against the Lord and against his anointed one. Indeed, Herod and Pontius Pilate met together with the Gentiles and the people of Israel in the city to conspire against your holy servant, Jesus, whom you anointed. They did what your power and will had decided beforehand should happen. Now, Lord, consider their threats and enable your servants to speak your word with great boldness. Stretch out your hand to heal and perform signs and wonders through the name of your holy servant, Jesus. After they prayed, the place where they were meeting was shaken, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and spoke the word of God boldly. Now, just to bring some clarity, Peter and John just came out of being interrogated and threatened by the religious leaders because they had healed a man who was born lame, and he had been lame for 40 years, and by the power of Jesus, they healed this guy. And so everyone's all suspicious. In what power and what name did you heal this guy? And so they're being interrogated. You would think that this would be an occasion to praise and thank God, right? But no, they were actually threatened by it because they didn't want them to continue to preach the word of God in the name of Jesus. And so Peter and John are back reporting all this to the people of God and they come together in prayer and they're asking God, why are people rising up against the Lord and his anointed one? I think we can ask ourselves that today. Why is it that the people of this world don't want Jesus, the King of kings and Lord of lords? And the apostles, in their boldness, when they were standing before the religious leaders, they said, we heal this guy in the name of Jesus Christ, the Lord, whom you crucified, but who God raised from the dead, and who is the King of kings. And in his name, this is what happened. Why? Because he announced the kingdom of God that has come. And so they had to deal with that reality. Now, um, once, once they faced the religious leaders, of course you'd be a little shaken, right? Well, that doesn't stop them. They come right back to where the people of God are and they pray that the Lord would continue to pour out his spirit 
and to act in signs and wonders and healings. Now, there may be a number of reasons why the world and the systems of the world and those that are in positions of power may want to reject Jesus. Because when we declare that Jesus Christ is Lord, this is not just a theological statement or just a truth for the few. This is saying Jesus is the King of kings and Lord of lords. He's come to make all that's gone wrong in the world because of our sinfulness, because of our brokenness, right. He's come into the world to show that the kingdom of God is all about shalom, God's original intention for the people of the earth to bring healing and restoration and fullness and wholeness in life. And people don't want to receive this. Jesus, who is the most humble king you could ever meet, the one who comes to us when we're broken, when we're burdened, when we have all of these sins, we have baggage, he comes to us in perfect love, in perfect humility, no condemnation, and says, give me your sins. I want to carry your sins for you. I don't want you to live with this sin. And sets us free. I don't understand why the people of the earth would not want to receive this Jesus. Jesus, the only man, the only son of God who died on our behalf on the cross so that we can actually be in relationship with God, I don't know why people would want to reject this Jesus. And the same Jesus who said, all authority in the heavens and the earth has been given to me. The same Jesus who we find all of our meaning and purpose and life in, I'm not so sure why the people of the earth would want to reject Jesus. But maybe there are a couple of ideas, reasons why. Maybe it's because in our brokenness or in our sinfulness, we want to live for ourselves or live by the standards of the world that perpetuate injustices and unrighteousness, that for the sake of making some money, they'd rather go and enslave and oppress some people and make money off of them or because we simply want to be our own king or our own Lord. And we don't want to submit to the King of Kings and Lord of Lords and surrender to his rule and reign. That could be a few reasons why. But Jesus in his grace and in his love, he still calls us to himself. And he said that seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness or justice. In the Greek, it's daikaiosune, which is like a very, it's a large word. It's justice and righteousness all wrapped up in one. And that's what Jesus tells us to do. And he says, the kingdom of God is not a matter of eating and drinking, rights and wrongs, but of righteousness or justice, joy, and peace in the Holy Spirit. I remember in my missionary days, I was pretty down and depressed because I was amongst kids that in order to fill their hunger, they'd all carry bags of glue around and cover their noses and their mouths and breathe it in just so they wouldn't be hungry. And I was amongst young girls, teenagers who were in the sex slave trade, who were literally living like slaves like prisoners at the brothels, and they couldn't run away, they couldn't do anything because their lives were threatened to be killed if they tried to run away. And I cried out to God once and I said, why are you letting this happen, Lord? Why does this happen in the world? Why do you let it happen? Why is there so much injustice and evil in the world? And I remember the Lord saying to me, why do my people let this happen? Someone once said, the world is the way it is because the church isn't what it's supposed to be. I think there's some truth to that. And so as these believers gathered and they prayed and the Lord poured out his Holy Spirit, what that empowered them to do is to be bold in declaring Jesus Christ is Lord. All things can be made new through Jesus. He's come to announce a regime change, the kingdom of God where he wants to bring healing and wholeness, where he wants to restore what's broken, where he wants to take the sins of the world and make all things new. And I wanna share with you, that's the same word for us today. 
There may be things in the world that feel like, oh my gosh, this is just too much for us. How are we ever going to deal with this? I mean, all the injustice and oppression. But the same Holy Spirit that was poured out here in Acts to the first church is available to us to also be empowered to declare the word of God and to say, Jesus Christ is Lord. And I want to say this one thing. The reason why the Holy Spirit comes and shows himself in healings or miracle signs and wonders is to show the love of God. That is the ultimate goal. So people will see that God loves them. So people will see, wow, this is true. Jesus Christ really is Lord. I remember once when a sister in the church came up to my husband and I and a friend and said, I'm having surgery tomorrow. Could you please pray for me? And she said, I have a tumor Suddenly, they found a tumor the size of a grapefruit in my stomach or in my internal organ somewhere, and I have to go in tomorrow for surgery. So we said, yeah, we'll pray for you. Absolutely. And we know that Jesus always wants to heal. And so we laid hands on her. We prayed for her. She tells us in a few days that she went in to have her surgery, and the doctors again did like an x-ray of the area, and the tumor wasn't there. Hallelujah. Thanks be to God. But that's what Jesus does. He shows himself in these ways to show that I'm in your midst. And this is what my kingdom is all about, is to bring shalom, is to bring everything back to God's original intention. So I want to tell you, people of God, you guys have been called a royal priesthood, a holy nation set apart to God to make Jesus' name famous, to bring forth the kingdom of God wherever you are, to whatever sphere of influence God places you, God wants to use you. And no one else can bless others like you can bless others. God created you uniquely in his image so that you can bear the name of Jesus and make him famous so that people will turn to him. So I wanna pray for you all that you'll go in boldness and be filled with the Holy Spirit to declare the word of God boldly and also to make Jesus famous. Can I do that? If anyone wants to pray with any of the chaplains or my husband and I, we're going to be here um, after chapel is over, and we'd be happy to pray with you. So feel free to come up if you'd like. Let's pray. Lord God, we thank you so much that you've invited us to be your royal priesthood and servants of the Most High. We thank you, Lord Jesus, that you are making all things new and that the kingdom of God is forcefully advancing on the earth. Lord, I ask now that you would fill all of us with your Holy Spirit so we'd be bold in our witness in declaring that Jesus Christ is Lord and that everything is affected by that truth in our lives and in the world. I ask, Lord, that you would use us as your vessels, O oh God, to make your name known, to make the kingdom of God known. And Lord, may healings and miracles and signs and wonders come out of that so all people would be drawn to Jesus himself. We thank you so much, Lord, that we are your own. We give you all the honor, glory, and praise, and we love you, Lord. In Jesus Christ's name we pray, amen.